Some of you probably don't realize that before I had a full-time job at Atria Bay Spring Village, I used to be a daily quilter and um, I got into quilting when I was a caregiver at home for my mother. Uh, she uh, had dementia and our days were pretty crazy. Uh, so it was really good for me to have a hobby that gave me a creative outlet and certain projects had a beginning, middle and an end, which felt very satisfying at the time. Um, quilters tell you, you do as much unquilting as quilting. So when you make mistakes, you unquilt and you unsew and you kind of have to let it go and, and let go of uh, perfectionistic ideas. Uh, otherwise, you don't enjoy your quilting. Although there are some very high level quilters that are all about the perfection. I'm not that kind of quilter. Um, I bet you didn't see that coming. So, um, so anyway, I just thought I'd show you a few of my quilts that I made. Um, this one is uh, a full size quilt. And it is, I guess we'll call this um, a four square. As you can see, um, each block is kind of a square, but it's kind of tilted. Um, it's tilted a little bit. So it's not, it's a square, but it's on a diagonal. And you've got the, the peach, the shades of peach and the shades of green. Um, so it's a little bit of a contrast. I, I always kind of like a, an easy contrast. I'm not one for very harsh contrast. So, um, and then sometimes I'm just a sucker for a certain type of fabric, even though it may not completely go with the color scheme. Sometimes I just can't help myself. And that, um, in the case of this one right here, I wanted it no matter what, even though it didn't truly go, but I still like it. Which and one? Which this one? one with the bright pinks and oh, it's no. a little bit Beautiful. more vibrant than the rest of the quilt, but I really liked it. But um, my favorite, uh, my favorite fabric in this one is this one. And it reminds me of olives, martini olives. So I think that's cool. So the, the most, other than sewing and seeing your completed project, um, you can imagine choosing fabrics or auditioning fabrics for the quilt that you want to make is a really exciting and fun part of quilting. Um, and, and Carlene will tell you when she um, gives you some little history of quilts. A quilt is really a blanket sandwich. So you have your quilt top, which is kind of the pretty part with your patterns. The middle part is batting. You can have cotton batting or you can have wool batting. That's the fluff that goes in the middle and it can make your quilt either very warm or very cool depending on the, the type of batting that you use. Um, and then the quilt backing. Some people use all one piece for the quilt back and sometimes the back is as pretty as the front. It may complement the front. Sometimes the back is another quilt. It's two quilts made together. And sometimes the quilt, the back is just all your scraps not going together and just kind of schlep, schlep together. So um, everybody kind of has a different, uh, a different attack on how you're supposed to um, put your quilt together. Um, just to concentrate a little bit on this one, um, again, each quilt has a, a binding. So this is a binding that I made. It's a bunch of two and a half inch strips that are um, kind of angled together to make one very long quilt. And you sew it to the front and then you flip it over to the back and then you hand sew it all the way around. You can see all those little tiny stitches. That's when I used to have patience. <laughs> Um, and this, a lot of people machine quilts, um, machine quilt their quilts. That means when you put it all together, that's how you keep all the, um, the layers together. And this one, I was a little bit, well, I wasn't lazy. I just wanted it traditional. This is a hand tied quilt. So you take embroidery thread or yarn or whatever you decide to use. You plunge it all the way through all the layers, and then you just put it through a couple of layers and then you bring it up and you make a French knot and tie it. Um, some people take a little bit of nail polish to 
um, seal the knot so it doesn't untie. This one has untied before. So that's just one of them. And this is this is the um, the bureau scarf that I made to go with that quilt for so beautiful um, for my mother-in-law. Um, and um, it's a herringbone um, pattern. And on this one, um, this um, what I've done on this. Uh, Bureau scarf is a pattern called stitch in the ditch. So that means after all of the quilt is put together and bound, you secure it by going up to each uh, each square or each piece of fabric and you kind of pull apart where you sewed it together and then you stitch in the ditch. And that not only secures it, but it gives dimension to your quilt. So as you can see, this doesn't just let lie flat, it's kind of puffed up a little bit. And that's because I kind of gave it a little boost by stitching in the ditch. Beautiful. Yep. So my favorite quilt, this is one that I made for myself. I call it um, the pistachio quilt. And that is my favorite flavor, ice cream, or at least it was at the time. And this one, it's not a traditional bed quilt, but it's, they call it a topper. So it would kind of go on top of your bedspread. And um, it's all greens and creams. So I'll just hold it up so you can kind of get a big, beautiful, big view of it. Um, for a while I had this one hanging in my house and um, if you're going to make a quilt to hang you put in a pocket so it has a hanging pocket in the back and that is the back the back is just a very soothing kind of sagey green color So I've made dozens and dozens and dozens of quilts, but anyone who does anything with their hands, you realize you give, everything gets given away. And hopefully uh, the people that you give it to appreciate all the work that went into it. Um, I don't think they really realize how much work and time and expense goes into quilts. You can't, if you did it for a living, you could really never make back what you put in, but that's mostly not why we do it. So um, these ones are just kind of fun quilts and they show a different type of quilting. Um, so this quilt is applique. So applique means you're taking different layers of fabric and you're kind of welding them together with stitches and then stitching them around onto a background. And this is my Westie quilt. I used to have a Westie and this is kind of a really fun, colorful quilt that I made um, when I had my dog Doobie, my good Doobie. <laughs> and this was a blast because I got to pick a different uh, neutral fabric for each dog. So each dog is a different white or off-white pattern. And then I got to pick um, a dog coat and then I got to pick a background for each block. So you can come in. It's really, uh, it's technically not a crazy quilt. A crazy quilt is a whole different type of quilt, but this was a very, very fun project. And my children were pretty young at the time when I made that. So they got the biggest kick out of it. And each one of them had to have our favorite square. So, um, my favorite square is this one with the pink, um, the pink flowers and then the pink heart jacket on the doggy and little curly cues. Oh, so adorable. Yep. Now, what about the back? The stitching in the back. Yep. 
So the stitching in the back is just where I machine quilted it all the way through. Um, okay. And it, it's not very neat. It's not, you know, a professional quilter would be horrified. It, the back should look as good as the front. And I, it, sometimes the tension isn't quite right. I had so many layers and different things going on on this quilt that I, I, I can't really say, like some of the stitches are uneven and they should all be even, but you know, the quilting police hasn't come for me yet, so I'm not going to sweat <laughs> it. But another fun back on that. Um, let's see. And of course, you have to have a disco quilt, right? You know, I like I like to uh, I like to dance, and I like to go in for the all things disco. So um, our quilting guild had a summer challenge one year, and we had to design a quilt of our own based on either a favorite song, a poem, or a book. So my favorite song is Take Me to Funky Town. And so I designed what I thought was Funky Town. Um, and... Are there lyrics there? Yep. Oh. The words, some of the words of the song oh are gosh. in the sky. Gonna make a move to a town that's right for me. Do, 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 do. Wow. Time Amazing. to get me moving, keep me grooving with some energy. Do, 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 do. All right, no more singing. <laughs> so anyway, I think this is really fun. I, I designed the buildings, and then I... Um, Applicate all the windows on top of the buildings and then sewed the buildings onto this kind of fun background. And then I made this with this sequiny fabric. I made the big disco ball and then I um, glued on these little shiny dots from the dancer's hand. Of course, this is me in my mind's eye in my disco outfit. Beautiful. Thank you. And now, did you hang that? Does that have? Yes, a... this was this was hung. Um, oh, yep. Yeah. So little tiny hearts on a black background, and then the big backing is black fabric with white stars. Beautiful. And want one more? Sure. Okay. This one, you can come in. This one is Hold on one second. Uh, uh, another fun quilt that we enjoyed hanging at the beginning of the summer is the flip-flop quilt. Um, each flip-flop is a, or each pair of flip-flops is a different, um, a different fabric. And then um, each ribbon, I picked ribbons to complement or to amplify the the flip-flops and then we have special buttons that accent um the what do you call that the toe the, i don't know yeah where the whatever it is where the fong yeah attaches to so the base it was, it was really fun to do that i mean i really enjoyed all of it um there's so many cool buttons i mean you could go absolutely nuts. I was crazy enough with fabrics, but then when you start to add ribbons and Aww. buttons um, into the mix, you really kind of go nuts. So um, some really pretty, pretty ones. Fun. And it's old, so some of the elastic, some of the ribbon was elasticized and it's lost its stretch, but um, it's still really a fun, very fun project. Beautiful. Thank you. So I don't really sew too much anymore. Um, I think that I have four uh, what you call UFOs. We call them unfinished objects. So I have four 
um, quilts. I used to not let myself move on to a new quilt until I finished another quilt, but uh, I let that go because sometimes I just got too excited and I had to try something new. So I have four things that I need to finish. One is a batik uh, king size quilt that is um, various um, hexagon, uh, batik hexagons all fitting together and it has a, an irregular edge to it. So it's not straight, but it, it's taking on the angles of the hexagon. So it's pretty exciting. It's, it's nice. I could finish it. I just kind of lost steam. And then I have um, a couple of other not really very exciting things to finish, but I should finish them. But one thing I really want to finish is I was making a, my um, best friend was ordained in the congregational church. He's an ordained minister and I'm making her some vestments. So um, that is an unfinished project that I need to get to. But uh, other than that, Quilting is a blast. I'm sure some of you have some beautiful quilts and quilt stories that um, either quilts that you made or quilts that were gifted to you by family members. Um, it always cracks me up when I go to a place like Savers and I'll see quilts or unfinished quilt tops that people just have passed along either because they couldn't finish it or maybe someone else was cleaning out grandma's house and didn't realize the value of those quilt tops. So that's all I have to say. Love you.